What could be better? A whole bunch of new corals for your aquarium. This is one of the best parts of the hobby, where you get to determine and select the type of corals you want to have in your aquarium. Hi, I'm Keith Burley, creator of the Reef Aquarium DVD and the Reef Aquarium TV, here to talk to you today about dipping your corals before you put them into your aquarium. At Aquarium Specialty, we highly recommend dipping your corals or quarantining them before putting them into the aquarium, as this will help to control potential parasites that could find their way into your reef aquarium and wreak havoc on your precious corals. Today, we received the shipment of SPS, or small polyp stony corals, from Unique Corals in California. In case you're not familiar with Unique Corals, they're the leading West Coast importer of live corals. In addition to importing, they also farm various types of SPS, LPS, and soft corals for the aquarium trade from the 14,000 gallon facility in Van Nuys, California. We selected Unique Corals because we know they are great at taking care in providing healthy and vibrant corals to their customers. Today, we're going to be dipping our newly arrived SPS corals with Coral RX Pro Reef Dip, which can handle some of the tougher pests like flatworms and nudibranchs. Dipping your corals outside of the aquarium is far easier and less costly than dealing with a flatworm outbreak in your tank. The first step I do is to acclimate the corals by temperature in a bag that they came in. While that is going on, I set up my dipping and attaching station. I use two containers, one for dipping and the other for rinsing. For both stations, I use water from my aquarium. In the dipping container, I use a small power head to keep the water moving throughout the whole dipping process. This is Coral RX Pro. There is a hobbyist version, which is basically the same substance, just less concentrated. So with the Pro, we shake the bottle and add 30 drops of Coral RX per gallon of the aquarium water. Next, we place the corals in the dip container. After 10 or 15 minutes of the corals submerged in the dip container, we take a turkey baster and squirt water over the corals to force any pests that are on the corals to drop off and fall to the bottom of the container. It is good to do a close visual inspection. If you are able to locate any eggs, you can take a toothbrush and brush the eggs off of your coral. But I don't expect to see any because they've come from Unique Coral's aquaculture facility. Once you've waited 10 to 15 minutes, squirted water over the coral, and done a visual inspection, you could move the coral to the rinsing container to remove any residual Coral RX from the coral before we place it into the aquarium. If you are unfortunate and get a coral that is loaded with pests, we advise that you do not place the coral into your main display. Please quarantine this coral and dip it again in the future until no more parasites or eggs can be seen. We advise you quarantine a coral with parasites for a minimum of four to six weeks while dipping each week. Just so you know what to look for, these are flatworms, and here you will see a close-up of red bugs. And these are nudibranchs. It's worth noting that all marine flatworms and nudibranchs are not parasitic, and actually most species are opportunistic rather than parasitic. Regardless, we don't want to introduce them into our aquarium unintentionally, so dipping with Coral RX is currently the best practice. Let us attach them to some small pieces of rock and place them in the tank. Here's a nice Acropora that I'm really going to enjoy watching as it grows into a larger colony in my aquarium. If your corals come with plugs on them, sometimes I like to separate them from the plug before I put the coral into my main tank. I'm going to dry the end where I glue to this piece of rock. As you can see, I'm using gloves, which is a good idea when using glue. Once I glue the coral onto the rock, I apply glue accelerator onto the glue and make the coral attach very quickly. There are several brands of coral glue on the market today. But for this demonstration, we're using Boston Aqua Farms Accelerator and Ice Gel from Bob Smith Industries. The accelerator is optional, but I prefer to use it when I'm using Ciano Acrylate. Now that we see it is on there, we can put it back into the rinse container. Once all my corals are on small pieces of rock, then I will start to place them into my tank. I like to place corals onto these small rocks so I could move the rocks around the tank where there is different light and water flow. If a coral does not look like it is doing well, I move the coral and change the light level and or the water flow and see how the coral responds. This one here is a deep water coral. They have thinner tissue and less polyps on the surface area than the high water corals. With deep water corals, 
dipping can be a disaster and often kills the whole coral. So that is why we recommend quarantining deep water corals in a quarantine tank for four to six weeks. Keep a close eye on it and make sure no pests emerge. And after four to six weeks, you could put it in the main tank. To attach the corals to my live rock, I'm using Aquascape Construction Epoxy. It is a two-part epoxy that begins to harden once the two parts of the epoxy are mixed together by kneading them. Then, I use a portion of the bottom of the rock and coral combo that I just made to attach to my main rock work structure in the tank. I don't want to use too much of this epoxy, as if I need to move the coral, I don't want it to be too difficult to remove. Now that all of my corals are in place, I'm going to use my blue LEDs for a day or two in order to ease the corals into their new home. It's been one week and the corals are doing quite well. A few I've had to move around, but for the most part, these corals have been quite happy where I put them. If you have any questions about any of the products in this video, or would like to order them, you could call 803-788-4445 or visit us at AquariumSpecialty.com.